It's going to be a fun tow. He's never operated the boat at all. It's freaking nuts. We're Steph and Travis, Canadians who didn't know much about sailing. We didn't let that or a global pandemic stop us from living our dream, and we've been winging it ever since. We took off from Toronto and made it to Grenada in year one, and we've got no plans on stopping. Subscribe to join our life on the water. Thanks to our patrons who keep the dream going. We met a really great couple that we've been really enjoying hanging out with, and they're new cruisers. They're kind of just starting their journey and their cruising adventure. They just bought a Lagoon 440 in the Caribbean, and they've been docked here in St. Martin, getting their boat all prepped, doing customizations, um, upgrades, things to make it their own. So they haven't left the dock yet, and I know they're super eager to start exploring. They've asked for our help today because they are going to be leaving the dock for the first time with the boat, and they're going to be moving it from the Dutch side in the marina that they've been at for the last few months over to the French side where there's a boatyard where they're going to be finishing off the rest of their work before being put back in the water to be out on anchor. So they've asked us to help them leave the dock because they have no engines. So they got their motors pulled uh, on the dock to get rebuilt. And then they have to do something with their sail drives that actually have to get pulled off the bottom of the boat. So they need to get hauled out before the motors go back in. So it's going to be a fun tow, especially going to be fun for Tyler, the captain, because he's never operated the boat at all. So his first time operating this thing is going to be under towing. <laughs> we don't really know what to expect because I guess there's going to be two workers and all they said was, yeah, we're going to tow you over to the French side. It's probably going to be slightly a gong show. <laughs> yeah, so we offered to help just to lend a helping hand if they need it. Um, you know, extra hands, extra eyes. And I think one other of their friends are going to be there as well. Um, yeah, we're gonna have tons of people on. He's med moored, and there's like, you know, two pillars that we gotta squeeze out of. And then we gotta get out of the marina, and then we got a two and a half mile tow, which the bridge is in the middle, and then we gotta dock it again, probably in a slip where the travel lift is. One side of this channel that we're on, or the lagoon, is like totally fine, it's nice and deep. But then we gotta get through a bridge, so we have to wait for a bridge in like good crosswinds, which would be fun. So hopefully the bridge operator opens that sucker up so we can continue our momentum. The causeway separates the French and the Dutch. The Dutch side is like nice and deep, no sunken boats. The moment you cross the bridge to the French side, sunken boats everywhere. Oh, yeah. A buoys, hard to navigate because it's a lot shallower. But we're going right through it all, so it'll be fun. I think most people just try to avoid the bridge if they can. Instead of going throughout the entire lagoon, they'll just go on the outside. And the whole time we've been here, for two months, I haven't seen it open once. The nice thing is it is a Sunday, so there is typically less traffic and it's less busy. We're pretty much making it up as we go, by the yeah. sounds of it. I don't so, know, anyways. We're hoping it goes smoothly. I know they're super excited to just at least get off of the dock, even though the first time off the dock yeah. by tow to the to boatyard. Move. But excited I know they're excited onwards. to move. Uh, let's head over there. Let's check it out. So if our friends went outside, they would have had to leave the lagoon by taking one bridge. They'd go around and then come in through this channel here and have that bridge open up, which is a lot smaller, before they can get to all of the boat yards that are on the other side of that bridge. These are our friends Yvette and Tyler from just outside Seattle, Washington. New sailors and full-time liveaboards, and soon enough, cruisers once they get off this dock. You can follow their journey here on the tube over on their channel Sailing Tootsie Marie. So you get your boat survey and you learn all about the boat. And so there's these known things that you know you have to work on. Um, but then when you actually get there, it, it's it's just so it's so much different. You know, you you want to make it your own and uh, learn and you definitely get lots of experience 
doing that. It's just little things that you constantly have to work on. I mean, every day there's a project. You know, at any time something could happen, even when you're out on the water, especially. So you want to try to be as best prepared when you leave as possible. So that's that's what we're doing here. You know, making sure we're ready to go. We came in new to the game and uh, we're excited to explore. That's part of the adventure though. Well, this is also, you know, like you said, getting to know your boat, feeling comfortable, making it your own before going out there. Just right. gives you a little bit more confidence and yeah. And being out there especially for me because Tyler knows engine work you know he knows all of I mean he can fix anything on the boat which is wonderful yeah <laughs> but I'm learning so much too about like the different noises it's almost like when you sleep you're always listening what's this what's that like you you almost are always kind of in a state of awareness totally. to make sure like wait that sounds funny you know it's just it's a whole new world and you're your senses become different you know heightened. on the water heightened yes yeah. for sure heightened. <laughs> Okay, Yvette, I'm so jealous of your little boat garden here. <laughs> Tell us what we have. So we have some, they're called Golden Harvest Cherry Tomatoes, and I've been uh, plucking them off as they're ready. It's kind of like branching out here. I had to actually put it in a larger pot because it was getting so big. And then we have dill, basil, which I use a lot, and then our parsley, I've been chopping that one up, so I definitely, definitely need more. This one's a little olive plant that I actually inherited oh, cool. with the boat. Um, it's kind of touch and go. It was a little deprived before. Have you gotten any olives off of that guy? Not yet. So we'll see how that one goes. And then we have our thyme here, which is ready to use. And then mint, which I definitely need to put in a different pot because that will take over all of this. And then lastly, we have oregano. I'm so jealous. You have an entire herb garden here. Isn't it fun? No, I've been enjoying it. You know, since we've been at the dock, it's been easy, but we'll see what it's like underway. It might be a whole different story, especially with the shifting and stuff. Oh yeah. I think I can put these inside and they'll wedge nicely in there. And then these I figure I can put in the sinks, um, but we'll, we'll see. It's all a, an experiment. If you have fresh anything on board while cruising the Caribbean, that's always a plus, depending on where you go. Like, I mean, if you go to the Bahamas, this is definitely an asset. Oh, I have. can't wait. <laughs> it is really nice though to have the the fresh stuff and just be able to grab it. Yeah, because anytime I go to the grocery store, I'll buy a whole bunch and then it'll go bad and I'm like tossing in and then I'll have to find it at a new place and right. I might not have it or whatever, but have it all here, which is awesome. The mechanics from the boatyard are who presented this plan to our friend Tyler and who are facilitating the tow. We're not sure what their plan of attack was, but they showed up with one inflatable dinghy with a 15 horsepower outboard. Looks like they're anticipating a tow with this one dinghy and also Yvette and Tyler's 25 horsepower dinghy. Four and then we have five when we get through the bridge because we have a friend of ours meeting us at the bridge. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a good thing that a few extra hands showed up. Traps is going to be on one dinghy. The two um, workers are going to be, well, one's going to be on your dinghy, one's going to be on the one that they brought. Yep. And then, and then our friend Ben is on his that he brought. Yep. <laughs> Should be fun. <laughs> We got a good crosswind too, so three dinghies, we'll get it. Steph's gonna jump in the leading pole dinghy and make sure the ropes don't get in the problem.
Which one's there? Watch that starboard side. No, 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 that's push. Yes, 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 mais... Il faut que je peux pas aller à l'arrière. Il faut que je peux récupérer devant, Gio, je peux pas. Hein? Il faut pousser derrière. Parce que je peux pas récupérer devant. Attention, Gio, c'est sûr. Ah non, ça va pas, ça. Ça va pas. Il faut pousser derrière, Gio. We're not really sure what's going on with the lead tow, but there was confusion from the start and a lack of communication. The gentleman in the lead tow spoke French. His partner spoke both French and English, as did our friend Ben. But you can imagine the additional challenge imposed by needing to rely on translations provided by two people down below in dinghies who are also trying to figure out what's going on. Tu peux me pousser, Ben He's gonna push. Vas-y. Oh là là. And of course, during this dicey moment, we had a bridge opening nearby into the lagoon, so there was all sorts of marine traffic nearby. All we were trying to do was correct the drift of the catamaran since the dinghy tow obviously wasn't working. Travis took matters into his own hands and leapt aboard to roll out the headsail.
With the catamaran now under sail, it's going faster than the dinghy, so the dinghy has no control over the direction of the catamaran, which is why the lead tow could not steer left despite where Tyler was directing him to go. Though judging by what you saw leading up to this point, I don't think the lead tow ever really had any control. After setting up the sail, Travis got back down in the dinghy in case he was needed there. But back up he went as we got closer to the bridge. Trying the head sail up definitely helped control the boat a little bit because as you saw we were just getting spun out. Obviously the boat's way heavier and it carries right forward. You get swung to either side of the hull. But now we've got about 13 minutes before the bridge opens. At least we got here in time. It's just doing the bridge dance, floating, waiting. This is insane. I know. Tyler hailed the bridge operator a few times, but there was no answer and there was a delay in the opening of the bridge. So we had to do a loop and regain proper positioning. We have two dinghies in the back with the motors running just to help give it a little bit of a push and then they're gonna put the sail out to also sail through. It's really nerve wracking. Here it goes, okay. Here's where all the marbles are. We made it through the bridge and now the challenge of navigating through the French side of the lagoon with shallows and boats everywhere. Thankfully, Yvette and Tyler had a friend waiting on the other side of the bridge, a local who knew the lagoon well and directed a safe route to the boatyard. We have a crosswind coming this way, and we were able to still tie to starboard. Are you guys happy? We're happy, we made it. I can't believe we didn't get a scratch on the boat. I know. Holy shit. I actually didn't break it up, but that's okay. According to plan. We had a plan. We're celebrating with chips, nuts, and cold beers for everybody. Yeah, that Honestly. was the most nerve wracking thing, I oh think, in the whole, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> I feel so relieved. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. I Thank was really you so nervous. much, like oh, you and Travis. Of course. <laughs> Honestly, we looked to put in the sail up and all that, that was so much. Oh yeah, that helped. That was big time good. <laughs> Obviously it's not gonna show on camera how intense it really was. No. But the priority was getting the boat safe. Yes. And sound, and I think every hand was busy to kind of, you know, we got what we could. All hands on deck. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was, oh my gosh. Okay. Were you nervous? Woo! Okay. There was about one, two, three, A few moments. 
four, five, six, seven. But seven to eight moments that I was like, oh. oh yeah. Yay, Cheers. Success. Success. Oh, we're so grateful. <laughs> so grateful, honestly. I mean, you saw what it would have been like if we didn't have each and every one of you. <laughs> Putting up the, the front sail was definitely a good idea. It gave us a lot more momentum. Everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Yep, that's right. That's, that was crazy. <laughs> but it worked. It worked. We're here. We're gone. We don't know how. So what did you think of it all? I had some pretty, like... There were questionable moments, especially when we were just out of the slip and all we were focused on was correcting the direction of the cab around. Because the dinghies, I think, at that point had no idea what they were doing, so we just kept swinging off, swinging off, and the cab was just going like this, and there's boats coming in, mega yachts coming in, it was just, yeah, that was high stress. It Sales wasn't our, It wasn't our boat, and we were stressed out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wasn't even our boat. Was Thank you. It's your boat. That, like, Thank your you. boat. <laughs> Yeah. You were calm and collect the whole time. I feel like people vibe off of others' energy, you know, if you're like, oh, we're gonna go freaking out what we do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So All in all that was good. Yeah. Oh, we're so grateful. <laughs> Seriously. It's probably foolish or not very bright on our part going into a situation like that with our experience because you don't know what you don't know and what corrections to make while underway to correct the situation you're in. So it's helpful having experienced sailors aboard to help make decisions for you. You man the sail well, Travis. But that's all learning, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good job overall, though. That's a well-deserved beer you got there. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he would have went on call right now with the insurance company. Travis! <laughs> This was definitely not something we'd want to be a part of again, and this sort of thing probably happens more often than it's documented. As new boat owners, our friends place their trust in the abilities of someone here in the marine industry who told them this was how they were going to get things done. And unfortunately, they were put in a very risky and dangerous situation. We're just glad that we were there to lend a hand, to make the situation easier, and to get the boat and everyone where they intended on taking it safely. We're very fortunate and lucky that it all worked out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Friday.